Hey folks, this has been heavy on my heart, sitting in the, what I call my chair of meditation. We finally got some leaves on the pin oak. Um, it's about the prayer tongue. And I know this is a controversial, it's probably the most controversial conversation between Baptist, Pentecostal, Methodist, religious, or whatever. If you'll separate all that and you'll just start reading your Bible and you'll start reading where Paul says that he had a prayer tongue, that he prayed often in a tongue of prayer. Let, I, I've, I've watched some good videos. I suggest you really search it. And then here's what it is. It is a moment when you need to make a decision. Let's say getting married, making a business investment, whether you should go here or go there. And you're struggling in your carnal mind. You need to connect to God Almighty who has the answer. When Jesus was on the earth in the flesh, he always would look up and he would ask the Father. So he had the Holy Spirit. He was baptized in the Holy Spirit at the Jordan River. And he would ask, Father, what do you want me to do? So Jesus was obedient in that. And we're supposed to be disciples of Christ. So we need to look up. If you're going to decide whether you're going to get married to somebody, you're going to date somebody, or you're going to go buy silver or Bitcoin or start a business, or what to eat. Sometimes those things, you know, what do you want to eat? That, that's not a big decision, but some major decisions. Whether I make a video about this or I don't, we're facing major decisions. And here's what I've learned about it. When i got to make a major decision, my carnal mind is going about a thousand miles an hour. And I've read the Word of God, so i got the Logos. I've got scriptures that relate to this and that. But man, if you read that Bible, there's one that applies here. And this has happened to Job. And this happened to Abraham. And this is what happened to David. And they messed up or they didn't mess up. So I don't want to mess up. So why don't I go directly on the main line through the spirit of truth and try to connect with Father God at the throne. And that's where the prayer language, this was a promise that Jesus said he would send. So I want you to know that prayer language, you'll be, you'll be given something to say. It might be shamana, botolamana. What you're doing is you're actually being obedient and you're, you're not going up and saying, oh Lord, I want, a, I, I want a Chevy truck and I need a new house and all that. See, those are prayers those are prayers where we're praying in our, in our soul, you know, desires of man. But there's some times where you need to really know what God has planned and what the issue may be. And I liked I, I was, I, some st things that I was listening to. Perry Stone explained it, but you're going to have to watch several of those videos. And then I've gotten confirmation from other pastors and stuff that what it's about is building your faith. Let me give you an example of why you need a prayer language. And you're going to ask the Holy Spirit through God. The Holy Spirit's like connecting you. But let's say somebody is sick. Somebody is sick. And one of one little group of us is we're going to pray that they be healed. And another group that says, well, God's will be done. You know, maybe you'll go on and pass on to heaven. And then... You got some people that say, you, oh, they got a spirit on them. They got a, uh, they got a demonic spirit that's causing their sickness. You know, you could be sick at your stomach because you ate the wrong food. You made a bad decision. That might be why they're sick. I don't know what you ate, but you're sick and I'm going to pray for you. By the time all of us religious, Baptist, Pentecostals, we get around praying on you. We done prayed up to the heaven 15 prayers. You know, if you got a root of bitterness in you, if you if you're holding bitterness, it'll make the body sick. If you're worried, do not worry, do not fear. Those are all commands too. I don't know if you got too much worry in your life, too much fear. You're not trusting God. But here I am. I'm just going to say I'm a biblical intellectual male that understands the logos word of God, and I'm going to pray this scripture. You need to put on the floor. I don't know what your problem is, man. Half the time, don't know what my problem is. When I'm just totally in my flesh, I need to be filled with the Spirit. I need to sit under this tree and start praying in a heavenly language, asking the Holy Spirit 
to give me utterance. And now, am I, how am I going to intercede for you? I don't know what's going on with you. God does. God will open the book of your life and say, at 50 years old, 60 years old, you might be fighting cancer. And it's an actual disease. It might have been caused because you've been a little bitter. I don't know. Or you smoke too many cigarettes. And it is what it is. But how am I going to intercede for you or you intercede for me if you're not going to the throne and ask him, Father God, the creator of everything? <laughs> kind of makes sense when you think about it. Well, let me give you my opinion. You know I'm going to give you my opinion. But my opinion may not be right. What's that person you're dating going through? What have they gone through? I don't know your wounds. I don't know what God's plan for you is. It may not be with to be with me. I don't know. I'm going through things, obviously. I've, I've lost my wife. Why did God, what was God's plan? How is that part of losing them? What's my plans now? God, what is, what is my book? And a good friend of mine said, when you pray, it's going to build your faith. And when you go to the throne in your prayer language, you're going to be asking in a holy manner. And God's going to open up your book of life and say, well, this is where I really wanted you to be. And this is the situation you're in. Or they'll, he'll open up their book of life before you were born and say, I had planned for so-and-so to be in ministry. Or I planned for them to be operating a business. But they made a lot of carnal decisions on their own. They dated the wrong people. They married the wrong people. But ultimately, if they would come back and pray to me i can get them back on track to where they wouldn't be down such the bumpy road and another thing jesus never promised that you would not have bumpy roads you cannot live in this world and not have difficulties storms things happen so you got preachers preaching that you don't go down bumpy roads that's a lie now are you supposed to prosper yes god wants you to prosper down the bumpy road god wants to to Bless you with abundance. That's all written in the Bible. It's all logos. It's just a time and season. We live in a season in America that's been pretty peaceful. We haven't lived in the time of Rome, being crucified and persecuted. We haven't been under uh, communism and, and, and what the Chinese do to their people. Though you Americans, you're blessed. But you better watch out because we better watch out. Because things are coming and you better be prepared. And the only way you can prepare is be in the Spirit. You want to know some insight to what's going on? Pray in the Spirit. This prayer tongue is between you and God alone. It's not about other people. There's parts of the prayer tongue or the, the, the many tongues. And, and it was used in the early church in Acts. It's still powerful. It's still used today. It's not been done away with. Don't listen to those lies. If you're just struggling to make a decision right now, who would you go to? I mean, I'm often saying, well, to my daughter, I said, daughter, you know, you got to decide you buy this house, you want to move there. But you know what? Often I say, you got to go to your father in heaven because Abigail, Alex, Susie, whoever, I have no idea exactly what God's plan was when when you were made but your name is written in the book of life I'm, I'm your name is written in the book of life i hope your name is written in the lamb's book of life too that's the one covered by blood that's where you received jesus and you took the uh you know that the cross of christ was where you got your grace that you're covered in the blood and that you're sealed and you're going to heaven but your book of life is what god's plan for your life was I hope that helps, but if you don't know what prayer language is, find out and ask people how it can use, how to use it. What do I do with my children? What if my children are not, uh, what if they're on addiction? Should I put them in an institution? Well, I don't feel like doing it, I'm afraid. Listen, I can't give you that answer, but God sure, God sure can. Father God knows what's going to be best for you if if i tell you what to do you're taking carnal advice if your pastor tells you what to do and he hasn't prayed in the spirit then he's giving you religious logos 
theology. You need rhema word. Find that out. That's a Kairos time word right now. Right now, what do I need to do? Do I need to be making a video under a tree? Or I need to wait for my parts to come in? Or I need to be praying in the spirit? Because there's things happening. I'm praying for protection from my family. Things are happening in America, and I'm not going to worry about it, but I'm going to pray, Lord, give me peace and direct my path. I know the plans I have for you, and he's got a plan for me on May 1st, and I guess we'll sit here and make a video. Amen? Have fun. Pray in the Spirit. Connect to the Lord, direct line in the Spirit of truth, and he will direct your path. Amen.